بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته dear brothers and sisters and the viewer of Peace TV Once again, we welcome you to this program, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a good listener. Meaning, when we are following this program, and we are listening to the speech that is going to chat with you from the scholar, please have the intention that I want to change. I want to follow the good advice. Because if we don't have the intention, you can just listen and listen, but there will be no changes in ourselves. We are not here to just listen and then feel good, but then we don't follow up with our action. Because Islamic religion is an action-oriented religion. It's not just theory, 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 but Allah always remind us Amal. Amal. Amal means action. Now we have been talking about the importance of saving ourselves and our family from hellfire. Ya yuhallazina amanu we are still in the same topic, but we are coming from different angle now. Now we have been talking about the family responsibility, rights of we as a father or a husband, a wife or a mother, children. And we discuss about what should we do. Now we'd like to share with all of you these family issues. Is this a mission only for some people? Is this a responsibility just for the scholars, for the imam, and not for everyone like you and me? Now, every single matter in Islam is a responsibility of every single Muslim. Always remember that. Every one of us have a responsibility. Only the way we do it may differ one to another because different people have different skill, have different knowledge, different ability, different capacity. But everybody have a role to play. We cannot just wait like, what can I do? Of course, you can do everything, but you can do something. Remember, in the earlier session we discussed we may not be able to do everything, but at least something. You cannot help the elders, help the young one. Example, if there's a quarrel in a family, you cannot stop the elders from shouting, raising their voice to the young one. But what can you do? At least you control the young one. Don't argue with them. Don't respond. Just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. At least you can advise the young one. Of course, I know it's not easy for a young person to stop the elders. Who are we to stop our elders? But at least you can stop the one who is younger than you. Pull them outside. Talk to them. Please, my brother. Please, sister. Don't argue back. Just quiet. Be quiet. Because when the flame is there, when somebody is angry, and you keep on responding, you are putting more fuel, more kerosene and petrol on the fire, and the fire will become bigger and bigger. It's not helping any one of us. Even sometimes the young one may be right. The mistake is from the elders. But the elders normally, because they feel they are elder, they have their ego. You have to listen to me, they say. It's common. I know it's, we have this problem sometimes. We know we are right. We have all the ayat, the hujjah, the burhan. They don't have. Because they don't understand. 
you must have a lot of patience and wisdom. One, you share with them, they're not ready to accept. They talk to you, who are you to come and tell me what is right, what is wrong? You just learn a few days. I have been yeah, learning for 30 years. Are you going to tell me I am wrong? Of course, because of the ego, they just can't. Because normally, yeah, advice should come from the top to the bottom. But even the Prophet has said, from the bottom to the top also, can be done, but normally people are not ready for that. Then you don't have to argue because at the time when people is angry, for you to keep on pushing your idea, your hujja, people just cannot respond to it. Just be quiet. That's why the Prophet said, Man kana yu'minu billah wal yawmul akhir faliyakul khairan aw liyasmud Look at the beautiful guidance we have from our Prophet Even our Prophet himself have experienced that. When there is a family gathering, when Abu Talib prepare some tea and invite all the other family members together, involve Prophet Muhammad to solve the issue because they say that Muhammad is a troublemaker, is trying to change our culture, you know, we should stop him. So Abu Talib wants to bring some kind of harmony back to the family. Because these are nobody. This is just from the uncle to the nephew. And then when the Prophet came, all the uncles were there. Abu Lahab would just keep on attacking him, abusing him. At that point of time, the Prophet never abused them back. Never shout at them. No, he knows they are uncles. He knows they are their, his uncle. What the Prophet does, just keep quiet. And sometimes brothers and sisters, we thought that by shouting back, we, thought, oh, we are great. No, no, no. By shouting back, show that we are very inexperienced. We are people of ignorance. We do not know what and how to overcome problems. So the Prophet was guided by Allah. He just keep quiet. No speech. Quiet, silent. Sometimes silent is wisdom. For them, they thought, that, oh, see, now we have been talking to Muhammad. And now he cannot defend himself, he's silent. Because sometimes silence is golden. What is the point when you keep on shouting, arguing, and the other party is not going to listen to you? Just keep quiet. Let them talk. Let them say what they want to say first. Let them you know, blow up everything first. Their anger, heat, let them come out. When they cool down, then that is the right time for us to come in. And maybe not that day, we just wait, let them say everything. We just keep quiet. Pray to Allah. Oh Allah, please help me and also help them. And then Alhamdulillah, in the second opportunity when they have another gathering, they are not going to talk to him in that way anymore because he didn't fight back. He didn't argue with them. So they thought that the thing is settled. Then come the second opportunity when the Prophet met them again. Alhamdulillah, the Prophet grabbed the opportunity to talk to them in a beautiful manner. Allahu Akbar, brother, sister. You see, family problem, sometimes it's not big, it's very, very small. But because we do not know how to handle the problem, it becomes big. So it is time for us to learn the way of our Prophet Sallallahu to solve problem. This mission of helping each other in the family it's a mission of every one of us. We can do something, inshallah. Don't just leave it to the elders or to the scholar, to the imam, no, we ourselves. By just be there, and when our mother, example, is getting upset, shouting, just be there getting some cold drink, mom. Have some cold drink. Give some small massage to your mother. Say, don't worry, mom, we are here. We are listening to you. We look into the matter. You know, somebody must just calm down the situation. Not to add more fuel, but pour some water. Pour some water. This is good. All this is a very minor thing. It's not necessary for us to be counselor to solve problems. It's just a would you feel you know, for somebody. Pity the situation that now they have a lot of misunderstanding. We are talking about the same thing, but because our approach is different, now the misunderstanding took place, and now we are arguing, and now we are fighting, 
at the end of the day, both parties will be a loser. So have patience. And all these things, brother and sister, for those who are young, where you do not know what to do when there's a family issue, family, please learn from the scholar. Go to the scholar who you trust, who is a good counselor, because not all scholars are counselors. Somebody are very well versed with the Quran and Sunnah, but they don't have any knowledge about counseling. Their approach can be very judgmental and it can become worse. And you are not supposed to bring this kind of judgment back to your family as you oh, you don't listen to us, mother. No, now you are what you become a fasiqin, a zalimin. You have turned astray. You must make tawbah. No, you don't talk to your parents in that manner. Even they are wrong. You don't judge them, say they are wrong sometimes because they don't like this kind of word from us. You can say, yeah, inshallah, Father, we are trying to improve. No, maybe we are wrong. But inshallah, we will pray, may Allah guide us all. There are many ways to approach, but you must have the wisdom and you must learn. Even the Prophet was reminded by Allah. Even our Prophet was reminded by Allah. What is the reminder of Allah? Inshallah, we'll come back to you after the short break. Alhamdulillah, Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Dear brothers and sisters, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind the Prophet about approaching other people, about the act of communication. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even said to the Prophet, Oh, you Muhammad, if you are tough on them, too hard on them with your word, these people will run away from you. It's very common. If somebody is too tough, their word is so, I would say, so hard, for the ear to bear, people will run away. If somebody will come and shout at you, curse you first, and passing judgment on you, you are wrong. You are zalim. You are farsic. You are stubborn. Of course, how can people stay there and listen to this? He's going to run away from you because you are too much. But you must have mercy on them. Fabima rahmati min Allahi lindalahu. That's why Allah said, you approach them with mercy. Of course, mercy is from Allah. And He'll give it to the people to whom Allah please. So we should ask Allah for His mercy. So that our heart is soft to talk with somebody. Because when we approach them with mercy, they can feel. But if we approach a person with a kind of feeling that I'm right, you are wrong, you have to listen to me. Sometimes people don't respond. Al-Qalam is a qarajah min al-jinan, daqla jinan. What is a qarajah min al-lisan, daqla azan. The meaning, the word that come up from your heart, really come from your sincere heart, the heart that care, the heart that love, inshallah, will enter the heart of the listeners. But, if the word just come up from your lip service, I think I know. I'm Mr. Right, you're Mr. Wrong. I'm here to pass wordic upon you. People will listen to their ear and it will come up from the other ears. It won't stay inside the heart of the listener. So when we want to talk to anybody, I believe that every single one of us have a mission, have a role to do. It's wajib. Because every one of us, you see something is wrong, it is wajib for us to do something. It is a must for us to act, either with your authority, with your speech, or at least with your heart. You hold on, have patience. By having this right understanding and knowledge, brothers and sisters, I believe that every single one of us have a role to play in a family. If you can't advise the elders, you advise the younger. If you feel that you can't talk to your father, talk to your mother first, and let your mother to talk to your father. 
But the best is if the family can always sit down and discuss with an open heart, open mind, there will be a lot of blessing. So I would like to invite all the good fathers. There's a lot of problem with our children today because the children is complaining. I have been talking, conducting courses after courses, camp after camp for the youths. And I found there's a lot of miscommunication between the younger generation with the elder generation. The elder generation have no time to listen to their children. And the children do not know how to talk to them. Because when they want to talk, they have no time. They are busy with their own thing. And they always say, no, you just listen to me. It's time for us also to listen to our children. If you don't talk to your children, what will happen to children? Children will talk to other people. It's not good. So to be a good father and good mother, we pray may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the feeling of love, patience, to understand our children. The children really want to talk to their parents, but the parent is too busy, so it's time. Once in a while, sit down while having dinner, joke around with your children, talk to them. Yes, son, anything you'd like to share with me? Yes, my daughter, anything that you'd like to inform me? Ask them. Because the children, sometimes they dare not even start first. Because when they respect us in the wrong manner, that's how they do. They keep quiet. They are scared that we may shout at them. But it's better that we ask, Son, how is your life? How is school? How is your work? Is there any issues that you are facing? Anything you would like to share with me? Open up to them. They say, we open the door for them to discuss with us. I believe. As father and mother, we want the best. We want our children to talk to us, but sometimes we overlook. Our body language Stop our children from talking to us. So it's time for us to change, to be humble and talk to them. Be a good listener too with your children. I used to do that. I am sharing with all of you this experience because I do this to my children. I conduct courses and I get them involved. And if they have any problem from other children, I want them to let me know. And if they have problem, they also will share with me. And of course, we are not angel, we are not God that we can solve everything. We will try our best to give them the best advice, the best way to understand the issue and to solve their problem. Brothers and sisters, Marshall, there's a lot for us to do. But the first thing that we must always remember when you talk to the elders, remember, who you are talking to. They never show disrespect to the elders. And when they are talking, listen. We have problems sometimes. That we are so, you know, maybe we are somebody now. We are so wealthy compared with our parents. We have more wealth than them. But of course, it's from their effort. But sometimes we forget. No, no, nothing to my parents. It's me, my own doing, because I'm a smart guy. And then we start to show off to our parents. Every time when we are gathering, we don't even allow our parents to speak. We are the one who monopoly the whole discussion. Oh, we, me, I, me, I, I'm so smart, I'm so clever. So what do you expect from your parents? A parent will just keep quiet and just listen. And they may admire the success of the children, but deep in their heart, something they know what you do, what you are saying is too much. And sometimes there are even children who are so successful, they belittle their parent. They don't want to listen from the parent anymore. If the parent said, be careful, my son, this is, that's why I'm saying, mother, you're all are very negative people. No, this is how we respond sometimes, because we forget. We forget that maybe we are successful today because of the prayer of our parent. But you thought that is your own doing, no. It's a prayer for your parent, and also is the will of Allah. Without the will of Allah, you will never be who you are. So these are the things that I want everyone who are children who are successful, don't forget your roots. Don't forget where you came from. And don't humiliate and look down upon others, especially your parents, especially your sibling. I know something among the sibling, maybe you are more well-off compared with others, more successful in your business than others. 
but don't try to boast around. What is there to boast with your family? It's a family. Your success is their success. Their success is also your success. If you think you are better, help them. And don't belittle them. And don't try to put them down. No, help them, pull them up so that you grow together. There is a family spirit. We do everything together. It's one of the family drop. If one of them fell, we must all come in and pull them up, help them. That's how the spirit of familyhood in Islam. And when you do that, Masha, people look at this is the real family. This family is the best family. Then people will always look at us and respect us because of the way we solve our problem. We know in a family sometimes you have this issue. Somebody is so successful and some of the sibling is so down. Yeah, because Allah is testing everybody. So we cannot just blame them and say to them, oh, you are a failure and you cannot be successful because you are not smart like me. No, no, okay. Be better than you today. Maybe tomorrow you can be better than me. Now let me help you now. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to play our role. That every single Muslim community have a responsibility to each other. The minimum that I said that we can do if you can do more than what you can do, you can even speak because you are nobody, you have no qualification compared with the people who are higher qualification than you. At least you pray. Oh Allah, help me, help my sister, help my brother, help my family. Oh Allah, make them humble, soften their heart, protect them from fitna, anything you can do. Or sometimes you can help them, help the children, your niece, your nephew, help them. Make them become better children, so that one day maybe their children will help the parent again. That's how it works. There are many ways that we can participate in a family. If you don't have the money to help the family, but you have the energy, use your energy to serve the family. If you don't have the energy, you may have the time, you may have the knowledge, share with them the knowledge that you have. In now when everybody got to do the same thing, no? Allah said, everybody will have a role to play. Those who have the knowledge with the knowledge, those with the energy with the energy, those who have the time with the time, those who have the money with their money. So we complement each other. And that's what Allah said. Don't be envy with each other. Even in a family, sometimes the success of one brother, it do not bring good feeling to another sibling. They tend to feel jealous over the success of another brother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all this evil and destructive feeling, enviness, jealousy among ourselves. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi. Shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfir ka wa atubu ilaih. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Ya wasi'a al-afu. Ya wasi'a al-afu. Wal-ghufrani wal-karami. Qajjitu murtajifan. Min zalati al-qadami. Zambi'a al-qadami.